Hey everyone, welcome back to another video on the Wreath Network on TryHack Me. Today we're going to be taking a look at task 17, Git Server Enumeration. It's time to put your newfound knowledge to the test. Download a static nmap binary, rename it to nmap-username, uh, substituting in your own TryHack Me username, and then finally upload it to the target in a manner of your choosing. Um, in this specific case, I'm just going to host it on a Python web server and wget it off of there uh, so we'll go ahead and open this up in a new tab I'll go ahead and save that and it should be in my downloads directory um, this is currently on the actual web server I've gone ahead and logged back in but I will go back to uh, let's go to my working profile here we go uh, uh, da -da -da. downloads and then I want the nmap um, static binary that's in there and then we're going to move it to uh, let's go ahead and actually make a directory first make dir uh, upload cd upload and then move da -da, uh, one more dot dot uh, we want the nmap binary here there we go awesome so now we have the nmap binary here and we can go ahead and start or start a python web server using python 3 dash m specifying the module http dash server and i'm going to host it on port 80 and we can see that that's now running now we want to go ahead and wget http and we need to check if config or ipa there we go um, this is a bit of a mess, but it looks like we're seeing 10, 50, 73, 19. So I'll copy that. Yeah, it looked like it looks like this terminal is a bit messed up, so I will go ahead and spawn it in again. There we go. Yeah, IPA. Yeah. So we have 10, 50, 73, 19. We can go ahead and copy this over and we'll hop back over to the web server and paste this in. So just right clicking and then we want nmap. We do not have wget in this specific case. Interesting. Um, let me go ahead. We should be able to just SCP this over, actually. So let me go ahead. I'm going to double check the syntax on that. Uh, actually, no, here we go. We can just curl it. It looks like it's showing us that here in uh, the, the side, anyways, in the task. So we can go ahead and curl it uh, with that IP, which we still have on our clipboard. So that makes it even easier. And then mmap... Um, dash o temp um i'm actually gonna yeah i'll put it in the temp directory sure uh i don't really want to lose it though when i power off this machine so we're gonna go ahead and we are going to put it in uh what's our current working directory somehow oh it's the root home directory i'm gonna put it here and we are gonna name it nmap dash uh dark um and chmod Actually, we'll just do this first. Maybe. And I need to rename it because I missed the uh, K there. Uh, move nmap uh, dash dark uh, to nmap dash dark. There we go. So we've got that all renamed. And you can see some of the other testers that are going through here. Uh, the other thing we need to do is do hmod plus x uh, to make this executable. And you can see that the other testers have just left this here. This is so that it survives reboots because when you reboot the machine um, or it goes offline and it comes back online, everything in the TMP, the temp directory, gets cleared, which is not particularly helpful for me for shooting videos. So we can go ahead and put that here. And we can see now, if I do an LS, that that is executable as well. And it looks like uh, the other guys here have SoCat, NetCat, and some other stuff. So we can see that we have that. Uh, now use the binary to scan the network. The command will look something like this. So we'll have mmap dash username dash sn, um, and then we have 10 and then xx1 through 255 uh, dash on. So we're going to save it as an nmap scan dash our username. You will need to substitute in your username in the correct IP range. For example, uh, we have the nmap uh, mirrorland oracle, and then it looks like we have the range that we're going to be attacking in this case. Uh, for this, we can get these first three bits by just looking at the IP that we have, um, which we can just do IP space A, and we can see we're on the 10, 
272 network slash 24. So we can do mmap-dark and we'll do sn 10 272 2 or 0 slash um, 24-0 and the capital N in that scan dash dark. And there we go. We can go ahead and let that running. I'm going to go ahead and let this uh, scan. While we do that, let's go ahead and talk about what's going on. Uh, so it looks like here the uh, dash S uh, N switch is used to tell MAP to uh, scan any port or not to scan any port and just determine which hosts are alive. Super helpful, especially when we just want to see what's actually out there. And sure enough, it returns everything very quickly. Uh, this is very helpful because, well, very fast as well, because we're scanning on AWS for other hosts that are up on AWS, and that's pretty snappy. The um, intranetwork communication on AWS is very, very fast, as we can see. And then we can see, note that this would work with CIDR notation, uh, which is what I ended up doing over here. This is a lot easier, and I find it's just faster than doing the dash in 255. Note, the host ending in .250 is the OpenVPN server, and we can see that down here. Um, and should be excluded from all answers. It is not part of the vulnerable network and should not be targeted. Yet, yeah, don't don't go after this. You need this to be able to do the lab. Bad. <laughs> the same goes for the host ending in dot one, uh, which we can see up here at the top, and uh, should not be targeted. Uh, it's part of the AWS infrastructure used to create the network, um, and that too is out of scope. Excluding the out of scope hosts in the current host dot two hundred. How many hosts were uh, discovered active on the network? So we have one, two, so just two other hosts, which makes sense given the network diagram that we've got up here. And let's see if it updated. And here we can see that it's updated at least to show that we've fully compromised the production server. And I have a streak again. Wonderful. Uh, let's see. In ascending order, what are the last octets of these host IPv4 addresses? Uh, so we want... It is 100, and we're just looking at this very last bit here. So 100 and then 150. But I don't think we had any space there. And there we go. Scan the host. Which one does not return a status of filtered for every port? Um, submit the last octet only. We can go ahead and do that by running nmap. Um, I'm going to name this a secondary scan. And we can do 100... Uh, 10, 272, uh, 150, and I think there's a space in here. I know this got me earlier, so we'll try this. And then we do not want the dash SN because we don't really want to see which ones are already alive. We know both of these are alive hosts, um, so we should be able to turn the scan as is. We'll give it just a moment. This should be pretty quick since, again, it's on AWS, and it should be pretty obvious which one we need for this. Filter resolve. Oh, hold on. I need to not have that there. There we go. So I'll let that run, and when we're back, we'll take a look at the results. And we're back. So we can see that we've got our results here. So scan the host. Which one does not return the status of filtered for every port? So we can see 100 did return this filtered. So it's going to be 150 that was not filtered for every port. And we have those results down below. Let's assume the other host is inaccessible from our current position in the network. Which TC port or TCP ports in ascending order, comma separated below uh, ports uh, 15,000 are open on the remaining target? So we have 80, and then we have 3389. So we have HTTP, uh, so web port 3389, which is RDP, Remote Desktop Protocol. Uh, we have WSD API. Um, which I forget what that is off the top of my head. Um, and then we have WS man, uh, which is going to be 5985. Um, I believe that's a windows remote, uh, uh, administrative protocol. I can't remember what it is off the top of my head. I've seen this before, but not recently. So we're going to mark that, uh, or submit that and we can see it's correct. We cannot perform or cannot currently perform a service detection scan on the target without first setting up a proxy. So for the time being, let's assume that the services NMAP has identified based on their port number are accurate. Please feel free to experiment with the other scan types through a proxy after completing the previous section or the pivoting section. Um, you could do this pretty easily with uh, S shuttle. It'd be very, very simple to run through all this. Uh, and that's what I would recommend. 
Uh, for the time being, we could assume that these are accurate and we'll play with them as is. Assuming that the service uh, guesses made by Nmap are accurate, which of these found services is most likely to contain an exploitable vul vulnerability? That is gonna be HTTP. Usually if there's something running on a web server and it's on an internal home network like this, it's probably out of date. Now we have an idea about the other hosts on the network, we can start looking at some of the tools and techniques we could use to access them. We'll go ahead and mark that as completed, and I will see you guys in the next time when we cover or our next video when we cover task 18, git server pivoting. But until then, happy hacking!